still floating through space, and I'm not sure where I am. But in the distance, I can see the Pleiades shining with a bluish brightness. The blue is caused by a cloud of cold gas and dust that surrounds them. Grandma told me that when the English poet Tennyson saw the Pleiades, he said they glitter like a swarm of fireflies tangled in a silver braid. I think he was right. All those shimmering stars grouped together do kind of look like a swarm of fireflies. In reality, though, this star group isn't a bunch of bioluminescent beetles. It's a star cluster just inside the constellation of Taurus. Some astronomers think there could actually be as many as 500 stars in the Pleiades, but we have names for just nine. Before the invention of powerful telescopes, most ancient civilizations thought there were only seven. In fact, six of these stars are easily visible to the naked eye, which is why Hindu tradition has six stars making up this constellation. Do you remember the six wives that the seven wise rishis divorced? The Greek myth has an explanation for this. They say that one of the seven sisters in the Pleiades, Merope, supposedly married a mortal, and then her star faded, which is why six of the stars shine brightly and Merope is much dimmer. So much to see up here. My head is about to explode. And there is that music again. Still fragmented, but getting louder. I'm straining to hear it better. But first I have to dodge a meteor shower. Yikes! These shooting stars race across the sky at up to 65 kilometers per second. They're moving so fast that I only see them for an instant. I remember that they're not really stars, but clumps of space rock that have heated up so that they glow in the dark. I still don't want to be in their path. <laughs> oh, phew. I've escaped the meteor shower and my journey continues. And in spite of that crazy sound and light show, I still hear the music. In fact, it's getting louder. I must be getting closer. Now the musical tones are connecting to become part of a melody. It sounds like a song. It's so sweet and haunting. Maybe a love song. As the delicate longing tones wash over me, I look around and realize I have arrived inside a strange spiraling structure. All around me I see old stars, gas, dust, and young stars, protostars, dark matter. Everything swirling, swirling. So many patterns upon patterns of stars piled on top of each other that looks like no pattern at all. Like someone took a big bag of stars and just threw them across the sky. Oh, I know where I am. I must be inside the Milky Way. The Milky Way is a massive galaxy. Grandma says that it's 100,000 light years across. She also told me that light travels 300,000 kilometers in one second, 18 million kilometers in a minute, 1 billion, 80 million kilometers in an hour, and 25 billion, 920 million in a day. So, in one light year, light travels nearly 10 trillion kilometers. Now multiply that by 100,000, and the number we get is too big for me to wrap my mind around. All this math makes my head hurt. The Earth, our sun, and all the planets that revolve around the sun, plus all the stars I've seen tonight, the Big Dipper, the Little Dipper, Polaris, Orion, Canis Major, Canis Minor, Sirius, Taurus, Scorpio, Alcor, Aldebaran, Zedatori, Merope, the Pleiades. They're all inside the Milky Way even though it looks as though it's something out there, we are actually in it. This massive galaxy is our galaxy. So in a way, I'm home, and the beautiful music is coming from here. 
This music from the Milky Way reminds me of a Chinese story that Grandma told me. The story says that there were seven beautiful young weaver girls whose job it was to weave the tapestry of our night sky and then slowly spread it over the earth each night. Each morning, the sun melted this wonderful fabric. So each night, they had to start all over again, threading their bobbins and weaving their fabric. By moonlight, they worked and sang, and their singing was accompanied by the clicking of their looms. These seven weaver girls were known for their beauty as well as their skill, and the youngest weaver, who was called Jinu, was the most skilled and beautiful of them all. Her silken fabrics were finer than the clouds in the sky and brighter than anything that has ever been seen. But Jinu was unhappy. Her sad song filled the sky world. Below in the earthly world, a boy named Niu Lang worked every day in the fields, plowing the soil with his family's ox and taking care of the family's animals. One night, after a long, hard day of work in the hot sun, Niu Lang, who was also unhappy, gazed up at the starry sky and played on his flute. After he fell asleep under a willow tree, his dreams took him to where Jinu and her sisters were playing with some magic water from a pond. It was love at first sight. He played for her a soft, cool song of welcome. This music reminded her of cool, bubbling water and the warmth of the rising sun. With a strong, clear voice, she joined him and began to sing with his flute, telling him of the sky above and her own sadness. Niu Lang's flute and Jinu's singing twined together into a love song. Butterflies, birds, and other insects flew around them as the music continued. Jinu was so much in love that she ran away from her sky home to be with Niu Lang, and soon after they were married. But all this was without the knowledge of the goddess, her mother. For a time, the pair lived happily on earth, and they had two children. But after a while up in heaven, the gods needed new silk to make new clothes, and the goddess could not find her daughter Zinu to do the weaving. Finally, after years of searching, she found Zinu down on earth and happily married to a mortal. The goddess was furious and ordered Zinu to return to heaven. Celestial guards were sent to drag her back, and she was forced to return to the weaving that she had neglected while living on earth. Alone again on earth, poor Niu Lang missed his wife desperately, and his children were unhappy. He played on his flute, and his sad, sweet song floated up to the heavens. As she heard his music, Jinu longed for him, and her tears dropped down upon her weaving. The night's dark, velvety coverlet became dotted with silvery stars. One day, Niu Lang's old friend, the family's ox, took pity on him and said, I am old and I will die soon. When I do, please cut off my skin and wear it over yourself and the children. It will make a magic robe that will take you all up to heaven where you will find your wife. So Niu Lang did as he'd been told. When the ox died, he put on the skin and carried his two beloved children off to heaven to find Jinu. But when the goddess, Jinu's mother, discovered that Jinu had once again neglected her weaving, she became furious. Using her hairpin, she scratched a line right across the heavens. Water gushed into it and formed a wide silver river in the sky, separating the two lovers completely. This silver river is now known as the Milky Way, and it separates the stars Altair and Vega, Jinu and New Lang. Banished to opposite sides of the huge silver river, the lovers grieved that they could never be together again. But a flock of sympathetic magpies came to their rescue. The birds made a bridge so that the two young people could be together one night of each year. Every year, on the seventh day of the seventh lunar month, the flock of magpies forms a bridge to reunite Jinu and New Lang for a single day. And every time they meet, a chorus of joyful birds and new stars from the Milky Way serenades the young lovers. This day is like our Valentine's Day, and in China, it is called Qi Zi Day.
I can feel the sun on my face. When I open my eyes, I realize that morning has come and a shaft of bright sun is falling across my backyard hammock. I have a crick in my neck and the millions of stars have all faded away in the daylight. The trees, the back fence, my bike, everything I couldn't see last night has reappeared. I can hear the fridge humming in the kitchen and my mom making breakfast. I guess we have power. Although I can't see them now, I know that the constellations and all their stories are still up there. And in my head, I hear the last song playing over and over, strong and clear. It's a new day and I can't wait to tell Grandma the story of my own night journey through the stars. Mom, where's the phone? 